Some of the responses that we got are just, they're indescribable. There's, I just, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it other than it's just the craziest shit that I've ever seen. To your left. The responses that we get, that Mike says out loud based on what I was asking and vice versa, it's mind blowing. It feels almost like the tips of fingers just brush up on the back of my neck and it's just very light, but it's enough to create pressure and to absolutely scare me. In part one, we establish communication with the spirits still residing in Edinburgh. Every square inch of this place is alive with intense paranormal energy. Now, it was time to take it to the next level. Ethan and I will be splitting up to conduct what is known as the Estes Method. The name comes from Carl Pfeiffer, Connor Randall, and Michelle Tate, who were searching for a new and innovative way to communicate with the other side. This idea would come to life in the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado in 2016 and involves one person acting as a vessel while the other asks questions. The vessel will sit far away from the person asking questions and wear noise-canceling headphones while listening to the static of the spirit box. The vessel cannot hear the questions being asked, while the person asking questions can't hear what's coming from the spirit box. The idea behind this is to remove as much bias as possible and see if anything being asked or answered matches. Is there anybody in the blue room right now? Something very terrible happened in that room. Can you tell me what that was? Back door. There's a cat outside. Initially when you start these tests, you don't really seem to get a lot of answers that make any sense, if any answers at all. Starting out, it's talking about the animals outside. There were actually cats outside that lived under one of the sheds nearby. So it, it, in a sense, it was relevant, but it was irrelevant to what we were asking it. What did I see downstairs earlier? Who was that? In the basement. Death. Over the sink. Fall, you go down. Any danger by being here? Fall. See, I can't push them. Do you wish to harm us in any way? Go away. To your left. These responses were pretty intense to hear, to say the least. That room itself, the red room, feels very tense and just all around bad. It does, it's not a good feeling part of the building whatsoever. What's gonna happen if we don't go away? Like what was happening earlier, you can, some of the responses that Mike was getting, it seemed like it was multiple spirits talking amongst each other about us. And that's what he was saying out loud, which, again, blows my mind. They're not scared. What is downstairs? For yourself. Bad news. 
Get out of here. What a Don't problem. listen. I don't think they will. There's two of them. Two of who? Two of us? That's what I said. Oh my fucking god, dude. Holy shit. Yes. Maya. Wrap it up. When, when I heard that, it freaked me out. I got really freaked out. I got so nervous for some reason that I just had, we, I had to stop it. Cause I didn't want him to get too deep into his session because you're not supposed to do these sessions for too long to begin with. I figured we would at this point just switch and uh, put the headphones on and see what else we can get. When I responded to Ethan directly through the, the, the spirit box, I couldn't hear anything that he was saying. I had no idea what was being said over that walkie talkie. The only thing that I was saying was what I heard through the spirit box. And even going back now and watching that footage, it just, it gives me chills because it lets me know that something was talking through me to Ethan and it was direct and we've never gotten anything like that before. Right before ending the session entirely and swapping places with Ethan, I captured some strange voices followed by a loud tap on the mic. Listen closely. After capturing some amazing responses using the Estes method, we wanted to see if we could recreate that success by swapping places and asking different questions. Could using a different vessel provide different results? Would you rather communicate with us using the device that Ethan has now? I'm having a great time. You asked for it. Are we doing anything right now that upsets you? Something's coming. What's coming? Are we in danger? Ethan. I just heard something down there, and I don't know if he heard it over the headphones, too. He's, like, looking around. During this part of the session, there is a audible knock that comes from the room that I'm in, the blue room. And I couldn't hear the knock, but I remember looking up and, like, feeling like Mike had just come into the room or something like that. I didn't hear the knock, but I remember looking up because I felt like, you know, something else was in there. He flew back up. Ethan right now, can you reach out and touch him maybe? Are you the one that's making all that noise? Yes. Oh my fuck. No. Mike asked, asked through the walkie talkie if the spirit is the one making all the noise. I said yes out loud, and then there was a knock in the red room, the same type of knock that came from the blue room on opposite ends of the building. It seemed like for most of the duration of that, that Estes method, we really weren't getting too much. Then suddenly there was this super loud knock in the room with me, directly behind me. It's actually pretty close to my camera. You can hear it in the camera audio, how close it is. And I asked, was that you? Are you making all that noise? 
Ethan answers directly, yes. It's my pain. Does the pain that you hold on to from your past life prevent you from moving on? The house? What about the house? Pray. We've been told that there's some dark entities here. Is that true? Am I speaking to one of them right now? Don't. As soon as I asked that, he said don't. All right, I'm done. I didn't want to go walk down the hallway alone in this place, but we had to go do 30 minutes each in the basement alone. This is where the Joker is said to be. He's menacing. He is out to get people, pretty much. He wants to scare you. He wants to put fear into your heart. And uh, I kept that in mind the whole time. What time is it? It is 12.25 to 12.55. All right, fair enough. I'll see you in 30 minutes. Right. Or less, depending on how bad it gets. <laughs> Good luck. So going down there, we're carrying down all of our equipment, carrying down my camera equipment to set up different angles. As soon as Ethan walks upstairs, my heart sinks, and I know that I am in for probably one of the scariest things I've ever experienced while doing this. Ethan is going up, and I'm staying down. If there's anyone down here, can you give me a sign of your presence? Can you make a noise? Can you make a noise? Let me know that you're here. What's the matter? Did Ethan wear you out? Do you not want to talk to me? barely went past the kitchen. Part of that is due to the fact that there is dehumidifier downstairs and the property owner specifically requested that we don't turn that off. So we can't really go to that portion just because the audio would be completely blown out and nobody would want to watch it. So I tried to stay towards the kitchen and the back area and just investigate that spot. Is that you walking behind me? Bro, don't tell me I just saw a head peek around the corner there. Please. 
Can you make that device on the stove light up if you're down here? This area in particular is known as the uh, Hatman Room or Hatman Area. A lot of investigators and other people who have gone on tours to this property have numerous reports of seeing a tall shadow figure with a brim hat standing in the corner of this room in particular. And with that information, it just made me even more nervous to go anywhere near that spot. But that was really the only way I could go. The whole time I'm down there, Despite the dehumidifier running in the background, I can hear voices, I can hear people talking, I can hear whispers, footsteps, things moving in other parts of the basement when I know nobody else is down there. And even with all that light, even with knowing that Ethan is 20 feet away, it was genuinely just scarier than anything I've ever done. I've, I've been to some of the most haunted places that the East Coast has to offer and have done them with no issues. But the second you split up and you lose your partner, you lose your friend that's got your back, it just changes the dynamic of the investigation, it really does. Oh, f As the voices are continuously picking up and, and it's progressing and it's getting worse and, and more and more activity is happening, I'm standing there in the threshold, just, I can't move. I don't know what to do. I, I'm walking in circles, I'm, I'm afraid. I hear this voice and suddenly it feels almost like the tips of fingers just brush up on the back of my neck and it's just very light, but it's enough to create pressure and to absolutely scare me. Oh, man. I panicked. I ran back towards the kitchen. I started looking around. I asked out loud, I said, was that you? And sure enough, we get this response in the form of an EVP. Oh, was that you? Ah, oh, was that you? Ah, oh, was that you? Holy f shit. Obviously I can't hear this while I'm there. I still have roughly 20 minutes to go before I can even come back upstairs. So I try to shake it off. I try to just pretend like it didn't happen and continue to gather evidence. Are you having fun? I take that as a yes. Can you make it light up and not just make noise? Can you bring up one of the lights too? 
If you use just a little bit more of your energy, you can. Can you show me? Oh, no, 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 nope, 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 I'm done. Uh uh. Nope. Nope. That. It felt very, it felt mad. It didn't want me down there anymore. Whatever Ethan had did, or even whatever I had did off camera or in between setups, maybe something was said, maybe we did something, maybe the energies we brought into the building. I don't know what it could have been, but Joker is an absolute menace. He's terrifying. There's a lot of things that I will do. There's a lot of places that I'll go to that most people won't. There's a lot of tests that I'll conduct that most people won't, but when it comes to getting touched, that's my absolute limit. I don't like the feeling of something physically grabbing onto me when I know there's nothing there because that means it's strong enough to do other things and I don't want it getting anywhere near me or anybody that I care about. By the time I got back upstairs, I was so, so drained. I had absolutely no energy to do anything else whatsoever and Mike could even notice it. So what I think was happening the whole time I was down there taunting it, Joker is just draining me. I believe that he was draining my energy and by the time Mike went down there, he had enough of it to do what he did to Mike. After the second touch, I was done. I ran back upstairs. I took a few minutes, stepped outside, got some fresh air, and it was time to wrap up this investigation in the padded room in the basement. Ready to go down there, face the music again. Let's do it. I feel like I'm never gonna forget the smell of this place. I know. It's not moldy, but yeah. Oh, and the chills are just like overwhelming right now. This is a room that they kept the more violent and aggressive patients and residents that were at Edinburgh Manor. It was padded at one point, they removed the padding and now it's just tile. This was going to be the very last thing that we did for the night before turning in because we also had to drive another four hours west the very next day for another investigation. <laughs> Who was touching me and Mike down here? You definitely made your presence known to us. Would you want us to come back here again? Listen now. Go home. Go home. Listen, bye. Okay. All right, we're leaving. Goodbye. 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 We're right at the end. That's that. Looks like that's a wrap. <laughs>
dozens of various locations up and down the East Coast, ranging from haunted houses to mental asylums. Thousands of people die, and none of them compare to this place. It has its way of messing with you, it really does. I think that anybody looking to go somewhere haunted out in the Midwest should definitely stop by the Edinburgh Manor. Edinburgh Manor is its own beast. It's very, very active. I wouldn't recommend going there if you're just now starting ghost hunting or paranormal investigating in general. It's definitely worth the trip to go out there. We drove 17 hours to get there and it was worth every hour spent in the car, every dime spent. I know you can. I just saw you do it twice. 